And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. Hey, look at that. Perfect that time. See? Perfect. Did we do it perfect this time? Are we on time? We got through the end. Are we on time? Well, three minutes late, but that's not on time for us. On time. Yeah, it's pretty good for a live show. Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is uh, uh, John Little and Ginger Cook, and we're going to just walk you through a step-by-step -step painting of a fabulous uh, blue vase and, and laurel flowers. This is, uh, this is really, I found this, I was so excited about it because it's another one of our old dead guys, one you don't know about. His name was Whitridge. Whitridge. Whitridge? Yeah, Whitridge. W-H-I-T-T-R-E-D-G-E, -E, I think. Whitridge and Thomas Whitridge. He was an American artist, and, and this particular painting that we're doing was painted in 1892, which is, you know, a long time ago. And yet, you know, um, I had actually never seen Laurel Flowers until I saw his painting. And then Elizabeth Clark on our Facebook, um, uh, when I posted this up on our Facebook uh, club page, art page, she found me a photo of those, and then Andrew said that they were the state flower of Connecticut, and his family family farm house was named Laurel something or other. So, um, well, there you Laurel go, Laurel Woods or something. Laurel Woods, I think he said it was. So apparently, those who live in the eastern part of the United States are all about these flowers. And coming from Washington State, if I ever saw one, no one ever pointed it out as a name to me. Though we did have something called Scotch Broom, ha. Scotch who? Scotch Broom. We had scotch, scotch broom? broom, which was a tall yellow flower huh. that kind of grew bushy, wild, yellowy flower that grew all over, you know, just practically like a weed. It was called scotch broom. And it was very actually pretty, kind of a yellow oxide, yellow ochre flower. So so we didn't have laurels, but we had scotch broom. It doesn't sound as good, though, does it? It doesn't really, sorry. No, it just doesn't. It's just <laughs> it's not, not as classy. Cla that's the word I was looking yeah, for. Classy. Laurel Blau said so classy. This is a classy painting. So it's, if you just popped into our channel, we do a lot of chat here on our live shows, but we'll get you through it. We're going to teach you a lot of stuff that maybe you hadn't heard of, didn't know. Maybe you knew it and just needed to hear it again. Sometimes, what is that expression, you can't teach anything to anybody that they don't already know? So on some level, and subconscious, you probably know all this. And I'm just going to bring it to the forefront of your mind, like Karnak. Ooh. And thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. And if you point. haven't subscribed, hey, let's ask them now. Yeah, let's let's start with a, a number one thing is that <laughs> please subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it. So it's your way of voting for us, right? When you I vote, vote for, for us, and it's just if you're spending the time to watch us anyway, please vote for us. And it's nice to have a thumbs up, but it's great to have a subscription. And sometimes you may think you've subscribed, and YouTube has unsubscribed you. You haven't been on for a while. Sometimes those little subscription things just disappear. And you're going, but I know I subscribed to this or that person, and they don't care. So, um, so there's a little bell under the subscription button, and sometimes, uh, occasionally this <laughs> works. It, uh, the YouTube will kind of tell you. But basically, we try to go live on Sundays at 2.30 Central Time in the afternoon and Monday nights at 7.30. And you can always just, uh, you know, write your own reminder, tell your um, your uh devices at home to tell you when that is you know we your devices are, see there was a day we'd, we had to write it down on a piece of paper or a calendar you know the olden days yeah like 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 two years ago you know that <laughs> now now everything's changed in fact if the stuff doesn't talk to us we're annoyed if you can't say change the channel and something happens you're going well what's wrong with this piece of junk right <laughs> isn't that true so that is so true but you, you know what in spite of all the new stuff, the old stuff still counts, and the rules still apply to painting. It's like a language. We're going to learn this language of painting laurels, and we're going to do it more in an impressionistic style, not quite as much detail as the original artist. You're more than welcome to look up this uh, uh, laurels in a blue vase on, on, in a find that if you want to and try to do it exactly like he did. And the time that permits, I think we've done a pretty good job of showing you how this paints and how to do these flowers. And it's really, they're very simple. It looks complicated, but it isn't. So who do we have for moderators today that are on? Uh, so far, I've seen Mona, Kim, Kim Sung, according to you, Kim Sim to the rest of the staff, and Wendy has joined us, and Tanya hey. just popped in. Oh, hi, 
Tanya. Okay, so listen, these guys help moderate our live shows. They're all volunteers. They keep the. They get highly paid. They get riff. They keep the riffraff out. How's that? <laughs> what does that mean? Those are the people that come around and do a live show and just want to say horrible things just because they can, right? It's kind of like when we were kids. We used to use the phone and call up people, at strangers, and you is know, your refrigerator um, running? Yes, you said, yo, you better go catch it, right? <laughs> that kind of thing. And and, um, and we used to, you know, oh, hilariously think, you know, when you're 13, you think that stuff's hilarious. And there's probably some 13-year-old trolls out there who think it's hilarious to go around all the live shows and try to uh, interrupt them. And what these guys do is they just stop that cold. And then occasionally there's some snarly, grumpy people that aren't, are, you know, that we want to just make it where your chat's fun chat. And honestly, you're going to be making all kinds of friends. You follow us on the live chat. The live chat stays up. So hey, watch. Judy Judy just showed up. She's here, too. Oh, yeah. I know she was going to the store. I didn't know if she made it back in time, but apparently well, she did. Well, thank you, Judy. And apparently listen, she was speeding. It, it, Judy's, um, here's the thing. Judy, at the end of the, be sure to stay to the end of the show and listen to the song. that Judy wrote this song, and she sings it at the end of our show. She's on the end Is of it, all our you know, recent broadcasts. At the beginning, broadcasts. too. Is and she the beginning? No, I do the beginning. You do the beginning. She does the end. Yep, she does Keep the up. End. Keep up, you. <laughs> hey, you uh, think it's easy? This is no, hard stuff. I know. Listen, and there's just really at a certain point, there's just not enough pills, right? Just, just <laughs> hey, so, so what am I today? Am I the director? The, you know, I mean, it's a bottle of ginseng before the show. You know, try to I'm keep everything you. Sh sharp. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, this is fun. We're going to have a good time. Thanks, Judy, for that. And uh, listen. I want to thank our club moderators, our Facebook club moderators, who did a fantastic job with our art show. Our show uh, Saturday. Our show Saturday, because what we do on our Facebook club is that uh, everybody on Saturday can sub, you know submit up to three paintings that they've done that, you know, original stuff that you know somehow they were inspired to do, and they want in the sh they show they tell us where they got it and they show the reference and they tell the size and other people go ooh and they're very <laughs> encouraged. You know what I mean? That's good. And then during the rest of the week we. Pretty much uh, focus on the lessons that we either get on our art academy or from our um, either old some, some old some old dead artist or from uh, something that you found on my channel on YouTube. But again, it's fun to see. I love seeing. I mean, look at I'm talking to a little box, imagining you're out there, and this <laughs> and goes hopefully all over somebody's the world. Really out and if there. I don't ever see the paintings <laughs> coming back, I'm going. Oh, nobody see, loves it, my work. It's great when I see that you paint it. So that being said, let's come on right down. We're going to be doing some, we're going to be using phthalo green today. If you don't have it, don't sweat. You can use phthalo blue and yellow. Still make the color. It's just that we're going to still be still makes the color. Still makes the color and add a bit of yellow to it. But phthalo <laughs> green is a really nice, strong color. And normally, I'm not a big fan of it, but today we're going to use it. Maybe um, use it in your way. And if and John, would stuff. you be so kind as to put the camera down on our picture? Okay. This is our. This is really neat. This sort of rust background with this sort of um, blue green vase and these interesting flowers with the nice swirly um, leaves and everything. I, this is a really, it looks complicated, I promise you. We're going to do this step by step. It's going to be simple. You're going, a piece really? Of cake. It's, a, it's a piece of cake, darling. It's going to be simple. Okay. So that being said. Hey, we said, have all mods are here. Bonnie just showed up. Oh, hi, Bonnie. We Thanks. have the entire moderator. I think Ginger and I can leave. You guys yeah, run this it. This is great. This is awesome. And remember, if you have a question for me, if you will type it in capital letters, then we'll try to see it. If we get a lot of people here, it's Sunday, so I, who knows how many people are going to show up on the live thing. You 400 get, so far. 400. All right. That's a lot of questions. And so if you have a burning question, you can either, if you're a member of our Facebook club, um, which sadly to say, we've now kind of closed the group. But if you remember, if you're one of the lucky people that got into the 4,000, um, you know, you can always just ask us then. Or you can email me at gingercooklive.gallery, contact us, say, this is a question, could you explain this to me on the next show? That's the kind of thing. Or you can type it in capital letters and hope we see it. We're also going to be doing a painting giveaway today at the end of the show. So I'm going to ask that. And so, Are you breathing any of this conversation at all? I have not heard you take a breath. Could you slow it down? Oh, speaking of that, you people, when you come back to play this again, there is a way to slow these things down. Yeah, if Ginger hand. talks too fast, YouTube has given us a speed control. Yeah. And, and, and for fun, kick it up to two times. You know, she that's is funny. When I was taking speech in the ninth grade, that was the biggest the complaint was you talk too fast. And see that I, I I can see that you've improved. And actually, I used to be president of a Toastmasters and used to. Did you, you talk know, fast there too? No, but I really tried to slow it down. I I feel almost like I'm on fire when I talk to you guys. Like we're trying to get this done in an hour, and I got to tell you as much as I can. <laughs> and I got to get done really fast, and almost like we're at an auction. We got to go really, really, really fast. 
There. Okay. 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 So here we go. Back to the chalkboard. Back to the drawing board. Okay. So laurel flowers. There. You know how we've been doing? We've been doing these flowers like this, right? These are the flowers we've been doing the last few. You know, either four leaf or something like that. We've been doing those kind of flowers. Okay. Now lower flowers are like that, but they're not. So if I were to do something like, I guess this, okay, like that, like a little star, they do this. Oh, see? That, that's what they do. Th yeah, that's what they do. That's a, well, that, they're they're a, like a like a star. They're almost a star flower. They're like um, who's that character in um, in the cartoon SpongeBob? That'd be the starfish. The starfish and SpongeBob, and so then. To, you know, but I didn't really paint them like that. That's kind of, if you have a couple of the flowers that are kind of the shape, you can fudge the others. You need two or three like that, you know, kind of to set the tone of it. And sometimes they do, they have a little point and then maybe this leaf is a little rounder. You know, I mean, it's all, you know, if you look at them and then they, they have these little centers that come out like that. We're not getting that detail, but that's the flower. And then, but again, it's pretty simple. And then the vase shape, Okay, the the thing of it is, remember we talked about drawing a rectangle, okay, and then we're gonna just um, you know do something on the same on both sides like that, right? Okay, just like that, make it go in. So this this width in here should be exactly the same, right? If you want to draw a line like that, and then as you come in here like that, as you come in, kind of squeeze it in on these corners. The thing that I noticed about this was the part of it was really round in the front. He had it, this was really round here and it did this in the front, okay? Kind of an angle here, but this was really round. So that would be probably, these vases are all pretty much the same. Once you've got one vase down, you pretty much have them all. And if you did a different vase, I mean, who's gonna know? Maybe this is broken and you got another one, right? Doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, you could do it if you could do another vase. I mean, you could do kind of a vase like this, I mean, does it really matter? I don't know. It looks more like a fishbowl, but I'm just saying you could do something like that too. Does it really matter? And you could just have more flowers. So, um, you know, somebody said that they that they had trouble drawing it a vase. But remember, if you just draw it inside a rectangle, find the middle, and whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. Okay, that's really simple. And then you can also draw it on a piece of paper and trace it on too. Okay. So we're starting with a um, with a dark blue background, all right? And um, I'm coming up about two inches, and I'm just going to draw a line across the bottom, and that's going to be where my this is an eight by ten canvas. Ideally speaking, if you look at his original, it would be nicer if you could get a. We're doing it for YouTube. We try to do eight by ten, but if you were doing it, I, I think it would be nicer if it was slightly taller than this. If it was up, preferably, I'd like it another you know, that much bigger up, but just saying. So once you, what, once I show you the idea, I think you could paint it any old way, but I, I think it, about another inch taller would be nice. Probably a 9 by 12 would have been a better size. It would have been a better thing. Probably 9 by 12 would have been a better size than the 8 by 10. But again, we, we so I'm going to find sort of the middle of this right here, and I'm going to come up about like that with my vase coming in like remember I told you it was round in the front I want to make sure I have that curved round in the front like that and my base I think the center of it was um, four and a half inches tall turn the I should put my glasses on it's always so much better it's amazing how much better you see with them um, four and a half inches tall check what that's a nine by twelve dark blue ready to go oh here's a nine by twelve yeah, yeah, there's a 9 by 12, but I don't have enough time to paint a 9 by 12, but that would have been a better size. Does that okay. make sense, you guys? Thank you, John. That would have been a better size. Okay, so, but, you know, I mean, if we were just trying to be just, just like his, okay? But what did we say? We said, I forgot now, I'm totally confused. We said this up here about four, and, well, it's really almost five from the top here, from the bottom, about five. That's about right. So I'm going to come at, um, I'm going to draw a straight line down here like this. So here's the top of my vase. I'm just going to come out here like this. There we go. Now, again, if you want to make it a little fatter, whatever you do on one side, just do it on the other. Does that make sense? Okay. They said something about like that math, too, didn't they, when they were talking about some sort of math problem? Whatever you do on one side, do on the other. I've forgotten what that's about, but I seem to remember that rule for other stuff, too. 
So see, this looks this isn't quite right here. See? So if you have a straight line, you can kind of tell, can't you? So there's that. We're going to say that there's our vase. And then, um, oh, so now that I know where my vase goes and where my um, uh, table is, then I can go ahead and put out the colors and, uh, and do that. So that's that's a good thing to do. Yes. So uh, background, we did ultramarine blue. That looks like burnt umber or raw umber. What do you think that is in the background? It was leftover paint, so I ended up using. Yeah, well, this was just a dark blue background. Just any old dark blue background will work. This was ultramarine blue, a little bit of brown, but you know, some sort of dark some sort of dark background. Um, you could have done even burnt umber would have been okay as a dark background. It's kind of nice when you have a leftover a leftover paint to take your canvases. And just paint them a color. If you paint some kind of yellow, and you know, if you have leftover paint, some light backgrounds and some dark backgrounds, and you always have those, then it's just kind of fun. You're, you're sort of prepped and ready to go. Um, all right, so let's just start putting our colors out as we're chatting, and I can answer some questions when I'm putting. Let me just tell you the colors real quick: cad yellow, medium, medium yellow oxide, purple, dazzling purple, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, green shade. If you're using Liquitex, everybody else is phthalo blue. Thalo, thalo green, cad red medium, and burnt umber. Okay? So now, can I answer any questions, John, while this is out? What is the best way to use highly saturated colors? Well, like what color? In what I way? Mean, you know, I mean, in what way? It depends on what you're painting. That's just ask, asking, what is the best way to use flour? Well, what are you making? Bread, cake, what? <laughs> just, you know. Um, not not to not to be snar snar snarky about this. I'm not trying to be, but um, snarky. I love that word. You like that? The snarky. It sounds like something my mother so would snarky. say. Snarky. So it's sort of a. You think of snarky kids, don't you? At 16, they give you that snarky look. Whatever. Are oh. you going with the vase at Den Center now, or is the other more to the left? The one you did originally was more to the left. Looks like you're going a little bit to the right on this one. I did. I just put to it give her a little bit more room. I did. I do. I went more to the right on this one. I didn't do it dead center. I don't think he did either. I moved mine, but you can put yours where you want it. It won't really matter. Either dead center, or whatever. Just throw it in there somewhere. Don't get it too close. I've got at least three fingers here, and well, there's three, two and fingers and, no, and you have about three and a half fingers on the other side, on the left side. Yeah. Okay. How do you how do you make transparent colors non-transparent without making the color lighter? Well, like for instance, raw, raw umber is a translucent color, and you're not going to do anything but that because it's a translucent color. That's what it is. So you can't make, you can't change that. You can't okay, make it that's okay. just a translucent color. So it's going to be. And what do we mean by that? It means it's going to have a slight kind of a. You can kind of you can kind of see through a little bit. Burnt umber, on the other hand, is an opaque color. You can't see through. It's like a barn door. You just can't see through it. Mixing white is a translucent color. Okay. Um, so, you, you know, a lot of it's how much saturated, how much pigment's in something. So you can mix it with other colors to make it. If you had a raw umber and you wanted it darker, you'd add some burnt umber to it. You're going to change the color. Guess what? You'll change it. All right. So I can take my glasses off now. Don't need that. That was phthalo blue. All right. Just trying to keep up here, you guys. That was phthalo blue. And then what was this? This was yellow. Oh, I just, see, I'm talking to you and I'm not paying any attention. i got to move this now. The labels are wrong. <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> Here we go. What was it? You know, so here, moving. Well, usually you do it that way. I know. Well, I just, I just. So put you it, put the paint where you normally do. You didn't put the labels in the right spot. No, the uh, yellow oxide's always there and the light yellow's there, but sorry about that. Oh, but, no. Yeah, so not now? to confuse people. Not to confuse people, because I'm already confused and I don't, certainly would feel bad if I've confused you, okay? So that being said. Do too many bright cancel each other out too many bright colors cancel each other out well look depends what you're painting you know but at something you have to have a center of interest so what you're looking for is not bright colors you're looking for values lights and darks complementary colors and lights and darks it's never about your colors it's about your values what does it look like in a black it's a black and white that's, always convert to a black and white so you know where you're at you know and that's what happens is that because all the colors kind of a lot of these colors when you take them out of the tube here's your grayscale they're in the middle section of this grayscale in here like you know this they're in here um so you you really want to you know it's it's about values and your center of interest should have the most contrast and the most detail bottom line you know but again 
you know, portraits are a little different. Maybe in a portrait, you're, you're going to focus more on the expression of the eyes, but, you know, you're going to not put so much effort into the shirt and the rest of it. You know, it just all depends on what you're painting. So there's no hard and fast rule, but um, this is why I encourage people to paint the masters over and over and over again because subliminally you're learning. They solved all those problems for you. As a rule in landscapes, for instance, the farther things are away, the um, the the um, the grayer and light, you know, and and less detailed there is. The grayer the colors, the brighter colors are in front. So if you put a bright chartreuse green in the back on a hill, it would look weird. So yeah, that you wouldn't want a bright color there. So generally speaking. Um, you know, the, the art of, you know, there's there's whole courses, university courses, just on color, you guys, just for that reason. All right, so some burnt umber. And then the last color I, I didn't put out was, I thought I had that was burnt, was ultramarine blue. And where did we stuff that? Ultramarine blue. Here. There Ginger, what is Van Dyke brown? Um, you know, it's it's a color that isn't in, it's a dark brown. Probably, I don't know. I don't use it. Couldn't tell you. I don't know what Van Dyke Brown is. It's a dark brown. I don't buy it. Um, I buy something called Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna. Um, but, I'm, you know, so you, what you'd have to do is buy it and look and see or look on the color chart and see how close it was to Burnt Umber. Probably it sounds like it has some red in it. But, I, again, it's not a color I use. A lot of times people use colors and oil paints, and then they become acrylic artists. And they want to cross over, and the names are all different, too. So sometimes the names, you know, you get with, in with the names, and it doesn't mean, mean that much. I love your t-shirts. Where do you get yours? Oh, do you, isn't this cute? Let it go with the Van Gogh thing. I found that on Amazon. I thought it was really cute, so I bought it. It's, you know, they had some cute ones. That's under the, what do they call themselves? Woo something? or No, that wasn't on Woo. That was just on regular Amazon. Oh, just regular Amazon? Amazon? Yeah. This was on, I think I, found, I looked up art t-shirts or something on Amazon and found it. I found, they had a bunch of real cute ones. I, you, know, you can't buy everything you see. Was, did your mother used to say that? You can't have everything you see. And I'm going... Oh, really? Okay. Oh, I'm well, so sure you can. There's Amazon. What are you crazy? Well, I guess I could center that vase. Should we center the vase because it's bothering people? I know it's going to bother people. So let's let's just um, let's just move everything over a little bit like that. Let's move our center over here, and we'll just do this. How's that? I'll just come out like that. There. What do you think? You move it over a little bit, and then this is kind of off right here. This is why I love chalk. Here's a great okay. question. Is yeah. there a tip on how big to make shadows? I never know how big or small they should be. Well, I mean, okay, when I was a kid, that's a good tip, and we're going to be painting this. Let's just paint this vase in one color first and let it dry. All right, so let's take a little phthalo blue and a little bit of white and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Let's just paint this vase in so it looks a little different than our background. Okay, we'll start with that. Need a color on it, right? So when I was a kid, I used to love walking down the sidewalk in certain times of day and um, and seeing that my shadow was really long. It was in front of me like I was a giant, you know, when you're... And you try to step on it and keep it from moving? Did you, you do that? The big shadow. But then other times of day, your shadow wasn't very long at all. So that really, there's no fast... It's your light source. So this is why we tell people, have a reference. Light your pictures and have a reference. It depends on the light source. That's what's creating the shadow, okay? And the direction of the shadow. Uh, I'm going to add a little phthalo green out of this, just, just a touch as long as I'm uh, painting, painting this in. And um, a little great bit color. of phthalo blue and green. It's a great color, isn't it? A little phthalo blue, a little phthalo green. And I'm just going to just want to get a little bit of this vase in while I can. Um, Before it gets away. Well, I mean, I, it, it needs to be sitting there drying. So we, if we do this... And I want to make sure I have it. For me, it's easier to do something like this, is to come up underneath it like this and make the curve. I'm much more likely to get a good curve if I turn it upside down. It's just sort of, a, you know, left-handed people may want to do something else. Um, you get sort of personal preferences now. Um, and I can then I can start straightening out this vase here. I want to come over here a little bit further on this side where my white is. See how I did here. Okay, like that. All right, so I'm going to say there's my vase for now. Okay, so if I if I need to adjust it, I can, but there it is. Now I want to switch brushes and just get a clean brush. And I want to do the background. And I'm going to just take a brush like this, a little round brush. If you don't have that, you can use a flat one, okay? 
and let's take a little bit of um, let's make some, take some yellow and cad red medium and make a little orange color kind of like that okay and add a tiny bit of purple to that just a drop now we've got so if you don't have that color you could use burnt sienna and we're going to come along here like this a little more purple to that I don't want it that bright a little bit more purple and I'm going to just sort of making little circular motions I'm going to start with this sort of orange color over here Maybe I'll take a little ultramarine blue and cad red medium. That makes another really good brown color. Look at that rust brown color. See there? And put in there a little bit too. So you can make a really good burnt sienna with just ultramarine blue and cad red medium. I don't know if you guys knew that. If we use a 9 by 12 do we keep the vase the same size? Yeah, he, he just went up higher with his flowers. Yeah, you he, keep he the same proportions. Ginger yeah, just he wanted did, more he room just, on her. He, he, he went up higher with his flowers than I did. Yeah. I just didn't have time. You didn't know, have the room. Just, just, there's just a limited amount of time. You know, we like to keep these, you know, the, these live shows about an hour and a half. And you start, you know, everybody says, well, why don't you do a giant painting? Well, because then we'd have to do a speed painting. You'd never see me paint it, right? Uh, you know, and, and get the details that we want to do. Because we're not doing, we're not doing painting party art here, okay? So takes a little longer to do it and I'm not making a snarky remark about painting party art because I certainly taught painting parties for years uh, got my daughter into you know teaching those and um, and that's how a lot of people you know have discovered that they can be artists it was a great service these painting parties so I'm going to take a little more brown and purple now to that and come up into this area maybe a little ultramarine blue and a little purple come up into this area I want this a little darker up here where my flowers are going to be and if I get this background pretty good let's get a little bit of rust color I got a little bit too much dark up there the last time on my original so we're going to lighten this up just a hair and of course you can always go back and add a darker color okay I'm going to say a little bit of darker right in here see there that's pretty that's a pretty fast background right now I want to just take a moment and pause now, do you see this horse that I've painted? This is one of the lessons that's coming up in our art academy. Do you see how the background's done similarly? Can you see? Yep. Maybe more colors, but it's a similar background. This is Learning how to do a background like this is huge, and we actually have a video on YouTube on how to do this background. So, Because if you make a hole, if you just keep, you know, you can, you can do all kinds of layers, but you've got to dry in between layers. But anyway, there's, I think that's kind of cool, don't you? And it's the same idea, all right? So... Now then, let's just take a little white now and go into this. Here we go, a little bit of white and a little bit of burnt umber, and I'm just using the same colors but adding white and burnt umber. I'm going to come over here like this, and I'll start this a little bit more burnt umber, maybe some ultramarine blue and white. That's probably more the color I want. Kind of a mouse of brown. That, that's a good color, right? Mouse brown. Field mouse brown, something like this. Victoria is asking, Ginger, do you always sand your canvas? Is there, is that the best way to get a smooth surface? Well, there's a couple of reasons to sand your canvas, and the one is that um, they're they're very rough. There's the put on the gesso is uh, put on is very rough. It's on a, and and so what happens is that your nice brushes wear out. So you lightly sand your canvas with a very fine sandpaper, just very lightly, so that you knock the rough surfaces on. That'll help your brushes last longer and gives you a little bit more. Um, uh, area for detail for sure right okay so I mean that's sort of my basic under now I've got sort of what I would call a basic underpainting take a little, little burnt, burnt umber and ultramarine blue let's make a little color over here all by itself now look I'm going to wipe the paint off now this is the trick I want this a little darker somewhere so I'm going to just take a little bit of that color and just kind of mix it in there so it's not all one color like this all right, so I've got a, at least I've got a good start. That's all I need to do. I've got a good, I've got a good start here. Let's come back up here next to my vase, and let's see. I may have to change the shape of the vase. I don't know, but I'm going to lighten it up right here, and maybe a little bit of yellow, tiny bit of cad red, make a little bright orange color right next to the vase, right in here. Leslie okay. would like to know when doing the background, do we want to want it brighter around the subject? Well, you want it low, not, not necessarily brighter, maybe a little bit brighter around the subject, but where, wherever there's a light, there's a dark, right? So this is going to be the lightest edges of our, you know, this is going to be a dark edge to it, so I want a light edge here, and if it's going to be a light edge here, then I'd want a dark. 
like on this part of the, the vase right here, we're going to have it pretty dark right here, right up in here, okay? Right in here, and we may have to come back with some dark shadows, but you, really it's, it's the contrast between your lights and darks. That's what you're going for, always, contrast. So, all right, so I can put that away now. Let's take, a, take out a smaller vase, and let's start, let's start working on our vase. I don't think I have it pinched in enough, so now I'm just going to come in here like this, and pinch in the pinch in the vase a little bit more. Okay, let me make it a little bit lighter back there. Here, I'm gonna just do this, pinch this in. Okay, and then I need to still round it up in the front. So I'll take a little ultramarine blue and maybe phthalo blue, because I know that I want it a little bit darker here, and I want to come around the front of this using using one of the little art sharper brushes here. This is a bright silver number six little bright brush um that doesn't mean intelligent that means it's sort of squared off and it has a nice um but you maybe you can remember it that way she, i want the smart brush right <laughs> which what did she call the smart brush so here's a little bit of ultramarine blue up here like this we're going to make this a little darker here how do we side. make student paints flow the same for backgrounds they dry so fast um the flowing shouldn't be it. You've got to have a good underpainting. That's the key for the student paint. You've got to have a good underpainting. It's got a little bit too much of a curve on that. You've got to have a good underpainting and dry. And and um, I would say use more paint. You know, it's uh, if you're using a real sloppy uh, liquid paint, it won't work. You know, one of those kind of that real thin paint that they use for painting parties. That won't you won't get a good background that way. All right. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and phthalo green now. Right. And I'm going to come up here like that. Isn't that pretty? Just white and phthalo green. Great color, isn't it? I'm going to come up here like this. I'm going to, we're going to have some bright stuff in this face. Then I'll get a little phthalo blue put next to it. A little bit more white. There you go. Ginger, how do you keep your paints moist? Um, you can mist them like this. You can take a little water mister, like, for instance, like a little fine mist. And just, just mist them. If you're not, you know, uh, try to keep the ceiling fan off of them. And, um, uh, some people like the Stay Wet Palace. The problem is it makes them very runny. So you, you're, um, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, what the, the Matisse, uh, no, it was the Liquitex rep. He came and gave us a talk on Liquitex one day, and he had kind of a good idea. Um, do I have paper, any paper towels, John? I guess I, here's, I, I need, that's not a paper towel. Do we have any paper towels? I'll show you. He did a great trick with paper towels, which seems to work, okay? Thank you. All right, here's a paper towel. So you take a, you take a paper towel like the well, well, this is really not a paper towel, but you fold it. This is this it was looks a, like paper. It looks like a towel. Yeah, but it's not from a paper towel roll, <laughs> right? But you you accordion fold it like this, like this, maybe more times than I did, maybe a bigger sheet, right? And get this wet, and then wring it out, and then put it around the outside edge of your uh, palette paper, and then. Lay out, instead of the colors on the palette paper, lay them out on the towel, and they will stay wet longer. That's, an, that's a really good trick, okay? Okay, so let's get a little bit of purple here. So now what we're doing, now we're going to get this vase to be, I'm almost going to start tapping some stuff in here, some tapping some colors, just because it's, going to just tap a bit right here, a little bit more green, maybe a little yellow with that, a little bit of green, a little bit of white. Um, there we go. Just going to tap some colors. That's too green. Let's put a little phthalo blue with that. There you go. Now, you, this is a pretty... Uh, see, that's when you get too much paint on the brush. I can't do anything with that, so I'm just going to smush that out, and I'm just going to shoving it into the paint. Just just tapping and shoving that in. Not trying to move it. Not just like stomping your feet through it and then just taking your brush and sort of moving the paint around, see what I'm doing like that, and maybe a little bit of more white up here. Now that's too much paint, so take most of it off, your brush, because you don't want a lot. Then I'm going to sort of stomp some light through here like this, just tap it on like that. And let's see, he had a little bit, well, a little ultramarine blue, he had a little bit darker right here, like there on this side. And there's only so much I can do, but I think I can do something here, darken this side a little bit, okay? See how it's starting to come around? It's starting to look a little bit, it's starting to look round. And then let's let's take some of this light color here 
under here like that just pull that down okay and then wipe your brush then I'm using the rest of the paint that's on the brush sideways just sort of coming under here almost like scribbling like chalk to get that sort of light base there and then I want it really dark almost a purple really dark in this corner right in here this this, this edge of the vase right here this corner and right here at this this side part right here it's very dark and then there's a very dark line which is I'm, I'm using is purple right under here and then there's this dark it's very dark right here coming up the side of the vase like that and then use the side of your brush and sort of just sort of soften that out and then we come back with some light right here on this this little edge right here is light okay so it's just interesting, this little bit of light edge right there. And of course, if we need to, to add more stuff to our vase, um, there's a little bit of light right there again, a little bit of a light highlight that's starting to show in here. We can we can add more stuff to our vase, but we've got, I think it looks, just generally speaking, I think it's pretty good. Um, Ginger, what's your thought on liquid retarders? Um, I generally don't use them because liquid retarders because I think they go sticky and it's some some retarders if you use too much the paint will never dry. If you're gonna want something I use I like golden uh, satin golden or gloss golden glaze glazing liquid because um, you can't overuse it. In other words, you can't put acrylic. too much and screw up the formula. So, so it's just really you, if you're not a sock folder you want to stay away from the retarders. <laughs> um, just, just saying. Okay, so now you see, I'm, I'm pretty good here. Now this is dry, so look, I'm going to take a little bit of white and raw umber and do this. Okay, just mix, mix it on my brush. Now there's a little actually. I'm going to wipe my brush off. See that? Now I'm going to barely touch it, and I'm going to come around here like this. This is my next layer of light on top of this. I'm just going to scrub it on so that some of the dark shows through on my um table and it's going to come over here I want it very light behind this face right here in the corner see that and then up in here and you want to do it just like chalk you know just sort of this is it's just really hardly any paint on your brush you know how long it takes to wash your brushes and get all the paint out so there's always a little bit of paint and sometimes that is just the thing to use I'm going to just because I want it lighter behind the vase like that Victoria would like to know what does flow aid do I have some and not sure what to do with what the flow aid? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. You probably bought it from Liquitex. Go, go off their website. They'll tell you all about it and tell you what to do. But I promise you, they have all the they um, they have that stuff. I mean, I, I think I bought some years ago and just gave up on it. But you can certainly find out what they think you should do with it. Um, all right, a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little tiny bit of phthalo green, a little tiny bit of brown. Okay, with me on that. Now, there's a shadow back from here that's wider here. And it's going back like this, and it's got the it gets a little bit lighter here I'm using just the side of my brush, and then just it goes kind of does this. I'm doing the light part first, and then I'll do the darker part, which is a little bit of ultramarine blue, phthalo green, and brown. Here's the darker part right here, and I just barely touch it and add that. There's my shadow going back from this vase like this back against this wall and then as long as I'm doing that I didn't quite get this round enough it's a little purple when I come under here like this with a dark line like that okay do we have a feeling that that's nice and round now here's our other side of the vase like that all right so it's starting to feel round okay Brenda's asking Ginger should I put underpainting on acrylic paper well, you're, you're underpainting. Yeah, I would. I always do an underpainting on everything. Um, yeah, for sure. I would put the underpainting on because it just it. What underpainting does is it allows your painting, your paint to grab. It makes it much easier to paint. I always do an underpainting. Okay, so let me just. Um, okay, I'm gonna do this now. Now I've got. I'm gonna just um, take my chalk. Are you and, dry? Yeah, this the background's dry now. See okay. how method to my madness. If I want to come up about what? About four fingers over and about two fingers down, kind of 
curve something going up like this, and like that, and then I need something that's sort of curving up here in this corner like that, and then I've got something that's sort of curving up here like this, okay? So those are my little curvy things. So what I found, the easiest thing for me to do is put the flowers on last and to put the leaves on. Now the leaves are an interesting in that they're an interesting shape. They're um, they're kind of this shape, okay? So, I mean, leaves are not all that different. Here's a leaf. Everybody says, how do you paint leaves? And maybe you've got a leaf that does this, right? But these leaves were all kind of, kind of, you know, like this. They came in clusters. That they were like this, so kind of those shapes, okay? So if you understand the shape of what you're painting, that, that I think that helps, right? And there was sort of a... Um, they're dark green with some light green background, but let's take a little bit of yellow oxide first and just come up here right on top of the chalk, and I'm just going to put in the stems for now. I'm going to just put these stems in. I will go ahead and later add some color to them, but I want to make sure I have my stems in so I know where I'm going to be doing my leaves. Now I'm going to take some yellow oxide and some ultramarine blue and make a nice green. Okay, and let's just... Uh, Come on up here like that, using just um, kind of sweep these around like that, a little bit more yellow oxide. They're more than just one color. Maybe this one's sort of sweeping this way. And um, um, got maybe, let's just do that one. There we go. Let's just do it again over here in the corner. Got some leaves coming this way. Maybe some going down like that. Okay. Got some going this way. Something going like that. You're still using that same bright brush. Same, same bright brush. Same, it's got a nice, nice, um, nice edge to it, doesn't it? Yep. A really nice edge to it, but I'm getting new paint each time. Now I'm going to come up and just swirl this one around. A little bit more yellow oxide on this one. <gasps> Too much paint. There we go, like that, and swirl this one around like this, and say there's some some petals, you know, some leaves coming this way, maybe coming down. Okay, you see how we're just sort of putting them in. We got to put them in somewhere, and uh, we're just going to start with this. And now um, I've got some tall ones coming back over this way, like that. They're not, you're not going to really see them. Let's take a little phthalo blue and yellow oxide now. Brighten up this green a bit. Come in here like that. Say I've got some leaves going this way. I'm going to brighten those up. Some of these got a little dull on me. Okay, and I've got for sure something coming up this way. Oh, and then over here we've got some going back down like that. You know, we can always add a few more leaves, but if you get the base, you know, the gist of them in, you know, and then maybe there's a, like a little smaller one coming down here like that. I think we had some here. You know, again, you can, you don't have to be exactly where I put mine, but you generally want some, you, you want some leaves. I'm going to take a little bit of white to that color and lighten up a couple and wipe off the brush and lighten up a couple like this. There we go, just a few so they show up. Does acrylics dry darker and you think you've got all the leaves and then you don't? Let's try a little cad yellow medium with that. And um, a little tiny bit of red, cad red medium. Try to dull that. And make it, there we go. Ooh, that's pretty, isn't it? I like, those, I like those colors. These I want a little phthalo green and um, yellow oxide. Let's see what kind of green we get there. That's a little, well, that's a little bright. Let's put some ultramarine blue with that. That's too bright. Kind of brightening up some of these once I've sort of put them in. And again, we can play with that a little bit. Now that we've got some flowers that are all in here, and I'm going to put some leaves underneath them in a little while, but just if I get this far with that, that's pretty good. Okay? I don't have to do much, and I'm going to pinch my brush off and just do more of a shadow right here that's green. A little bit darker shadow. It didn't quite get it get it as dark as I want. There you go. All right. So now 
when we put the flowers in, then I can add a few more leaves here and there, have some that are showing up. I think I had one that was coming out of there and crossing over these like that. Again, it's all about layers. I guess I can't say that enough. Um, a little bit of cad red medium and yellow makes kind of a nice rust color. And I might come along here next to my um, and put a little of that color on our stems. Okay, we'll just get a few little colors. And then again, you've got to ask yourself wherever there's a light, there's a dark. A little bit of yellow. I love a brush like this. Look at the nice, sharp, really sharp edge I can get. So as I start to add maybe some highlights now on these leaves, there's a little yellow oxide here, maybe here, maybe a little extra oxide here. Maybe I want this one a little brighter. I want this, this one a little brighter. Now I have to be kind of careful because everything's still wet. So I'm just looking to see where I can add some color and still keep it going because some some of these you want really dark in the background it's very important some of these are almost you know really dark green back here and um you go, yeah, there we go i think what a minute i'll have to do john is dry everything uh yeah. i'm gonna have to dry dry everything because i don't want to do the flowers over the uh, green leaves i want to put some this way off of this you know it comes this way off of here like that okay there's some green in there all right i'm gonna take a minute to dry can i answer any questions before we dry uh yeah so the shadow is to the left shouldn't the highlight be on the right see how your highlight's right in the center is that where it was on the original yeah yeah i thought he had it he didn't he have had it right a, he had original. a dark shadow here and he had a dark this dark shadow going behind i don't know how he lit the still life i really don't i'm just doing what he did <laughs> you know what i yeah, do you, that you guys way? are right you know if you want to make it more realistic put the highlight further to the right but that is how exactly how he had it which doesn't make sense but you know that's how they used to you do know, but i mean you don't know how he lit it sometimes people have two different light sources on a picture so the shadow will be one way so it's very dark here on this side of the vase his vase wasn't as fat as mine but still i like it right but he, this was the dark side of the vase and then he had a little bit of dark right here too the art so. sherpa has a brush called the cat's tongue do you use them and what are they used for oh uh, ask her She's given me one. I haven't really used it, but um, you'll have to ask her what she uses it for. I mean, I know she likes it. Um, but, you know, it's, I'm not being snar snar snarky. It's just that. Well, you aren't being snarky today. That's two snarky comments in one day. I mean, I just don't know. I used what to she be the snarky king. I, I used to be the snark. I'm not trying to be snarky. I don't want that light green. I want the stalo. That's pretty, though, isn't it? I like that color, but I don't want it there. Okay, I want it a little bit more green. You know, it's interesting. This is a different thalo green than I was using in Studio A. It's a different. It's they're both called thalo green, and my different green companies. Is different companies, uh -huh. and my green's a little bit different, which is interesting to me. I have to tell you, um, I think it's very interesting that you could get that big a variance in the greens because there's a lot of green on his face. But actually, his face is more blue. Let's just let's just redo that. We're rethinking the face. It's because his face is more blue. Here we go. There we go, I'm tatting this in. This is the next layer on here like this. It's a dark, very interesting, this vase. Okay, there, perfect. I like it. Now I'm going to dry it, and um, and then we'll put the flowers in, okay? Okay, you're muted. All right, while she's muted, we do want to announce we did send out the newsletters. Uh, we had 4,000 4, people in our list. Um, if you did not get it, check your spam folder first. And then add newsletter at gingercooklive.gallery to your contact list of your email. That should prevent it from going into the spam folder. Again, the emails have gone out. Check your junk folder or spam folder and add newsletter at gingercooklive.gallery to your contact list. And if you'd like to sign up for the newsletter, go to gingercooklive.gallery slash newsletter. Okay. How can I make my paint dry slower, or should I just do start oil painting? <laughs> um, well, to start oil painting, I guess I'll watch somebody else's channel, so you could do that if you wanted to. 
I'll, I'll say goodbye. <laughs> but, uh, you know. Um, I think that's you, dorky number three. Just, uh, <laughs> just, you are on a roll today, girl. What you could do is just use more paint. Some people don't use too much water on their paint, and they don't use enough paint. That's the biggest thing they have. I mean, I've been doing acrylic since I was 17, and it really, there's no real trick to it. You just use more paint when you need to. You know, it's like, for instance, I'm going to put, I'm going to just show you, let's put a few X's where we're going to put some flowers. I need a group of flowers that are kind of going in this area right in here, okay? That doesn't and look coming, like an X. No, I'm going to, well, I'm just trying to get the shapes first for you. And then I've got a shape of flowers kind of going over in this way. And I have to come back with my, um, coming up this way. And then he's got, a, I've got a nice shape of flowers kind of going sideways like this. You know, um, something like this, and then something up here. So then what I'm going to do is, like, if you can put little X's if you want to kind of figure out how you're going to do it, or you can draw in some shapes. The trick is to just, we're going to use a little um, angle brush to do these. I'm going to take some white paint and a little yellow oxide, and mostly white, kind of do these kind of an off-white color, all right? 99% titanium, all right? And I'm just going to, um, let's, let's start up here because it's a little easier. I'm using the back of the brush like this and uh, just painting in this little star shape. And then they you have to they have to overlap. Okay, that's the trick. You, you want to overlap some where the, you still paint the shape, but they're touching. And um, maybe a couple of them are smaller. Don't make them all the same size. You're, you, you know, you're just sort of indicating you've got some flowers in here like that. And, you get a few shapes right, and then the others can kind of, you can fuzz, fuzz those out a little bit. There you go. So there's one here, and maybe I'm going to drop down here. They all touch, though. This was the thing, that they're all touching. Um, maybe you just see part of one here, like that. So I've got a little white thing. There's a little smaller one right here. Some up this way. Maybe one right there, part of one. And so I say I'm putting my little flowers in. They're really very pretty, aren't they? And they, then we're going to come up here like um, like this over this part of it. We're going to cover a lot of this base. This is why I wanted to dry it. Come out here like this. I'm not even going to see this part of the base. And come in here like that. Put some flowers. And um, there we go. Just Come under here like this. Now move back up here. Some flowers. And don't get, you know, just reload your brush once in a while. Joanne would like to know, what is snarky? Snarky is kind of sarcastic. It's it's a, it's a term of being snide and sarcastic. Snarky. Sassy. Sassy. Yeah, sarcastic. That yeah, was some stuffy. Just... Just, um, you know, but I, I realize that, you know, we've got people that, you know, English is a third language, fifth sometimes. It's a fifth language. Fifth language or something. We've got all these brilliant people. What brush are you using now? Is that your three-eighths? Yeah. Three-eighths three eighths angle. Yeah, three-eighths inch angle. I'm going to come behind here and add some. Tuck these in on top of our... When you find yourself not the brush not painting, just add some more paint. Okay, some little ones back here, out of paint. Some tiny ones. They're not all the same size, you know. They, you know, just but they all kind of connect at some point. Let's just make this. As I see little spaces of where I need to fill in some flowers. Um, It's a sort of, I, mean, I think they're sort of fun to paint, you know what I mean? And they're not, you're going to just put some in. Yeah, acrylic paints dry fat. You've got to use enough paint, and sometimes a damp brush is helpful, you know. Not dripping wet, though. Yeah, because, you, you know, they'll dry out really quick. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a lot of paint on here, okay? Some of these are not that big, and they're all, like I say, they're all sort of touching. Kind of sneaking in there like that. I've got a couple up here that um, I'm kind of climbing this tree here. 
What can I do if I don't have the dioxane purple? Is there another purple that are the same degree? Um, I don't know. I'm not aware. You know, it's funny. I never heard of dioxane purple until um, I, Cinnamon was in college and she was taking an art class and there weren't enough people and I went and took the art class <coughs> with her so that she would have a um, she'd have enough students. I got three of my friends. We went up there and just audited the class. It was sort of fun. And uh, the, the teacher, t you know, who was very interesting. She said what she, she had us finding baby food jars and whenever you found an, um, a good color you liked, um, you put it in the baby food jar because she never could figure out how to mix colors. So she, she'd make, which, you know, which was crazy. Baby food jars were on their way out and I didn't understand her deal with those. But um, in any way, she didn't really understand that about complementary colors. Terrible teacher, actually. Sorry about that. But but she did understand, but she liked that color, and I went and bought it, and I did, did like it. Um, she was talking about colors you really couldn't mix. She was absolutely dead right about that. And she told also, you know, the only thing I learned from her was how to stretch a canvas, which I didn't know before. And I've got a video on how to do that on YouTube, how to stretch a can, fine art canvas like that, okay? So it seems that it's kind of come along, right? Now we're going back and kind of... Well, just this is our first layer of flower. We're just it's our first flower, first coat of flowers. And then what we want un, underneath the, the, the that's our first coat of flowers. And I want um want I'm going to put some green leaves back. Okay, so I know that I want want a, I want a green leaf like back here somewhere, kind of a dark green leaf, right back in here like this, coming out of there like that. You know, I want some dark in here around these flowers. So I'll come back in here with almost a dark blue purple color and add some dark into this little section here and darken it up in here a little bit with some dark color. Kind of separate out, kind of separate out some of my flowers a bit, but just tapping in the dark. But see, even that little bit of contrast made a difference, didn't it? Okay, I'm say something I want dark here. And um, then uh, underneath his um, flowers, he's got um, leaves gr growing down here like that. He's got these beautiful green green leaves coming out. Karen would like to know, is there a limit to how many layers a canvas will take well, painting over and over and over and over again? Well, um, you, you can get ridges going, and then, then it makes it hard to get rid of it. You start using tape for things, you can get a ridge and it's very hard to paint over it. But you can take any old canvas and paint over another painting coat. So mostly you can do it a lot. Certainly do it a lot. You can paint over it, just turn it upside down, paint another painting on top of it if they don't like what you just painted, okay? And you've got some um there's a little bit of these green green leaves down here on the vase, which I thought it all kind of curved that way, which I thought they were real pretty, so I thought we'd put those in, okay, like that, and uh, maybe put a few more gold ones this up this way. Now that I've seen where I need some um, some um, leaves, I'm going to put a few this way, a little yellow oxide on some of these. What did you, what did Ginger use for purple before she found the dioxane purple? Well, I probably just used ultramarine blue and um, red. Just made your own? Made your own, and you can. And that's you. Um, do you have a little light one of those little canvases? I'll show you. you. Guys, want to see the difference? And I can show you what the difference would be. You just really can. Can you really see it when you add white to it? Okay, it's just one of those colors that your reds are um, um, really different. Here's like here's a here's a little yellow canvas, and um, all right, here's purple on it. Here's some white next to it. All right, that's 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 dazzling purple. All right. Now, if you were to take um, naphthal crimson, let me find it. That's your primary red. That's from Matisse. your primary red from Matisse, which is your primary red. Uh, I have a brand new tube of it. It's somewhere, but I'll just get this out because here's the flow. It doesn't really did, matter. Did you? Oh. I have a new. I know you gave me a new tube of it. I'm just not I seeing know. it right this second. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to get this out right. I'd yeah, like to thank Eric ultra... for the donation. Thank you very much, Eric. Oh, thank you, Eric. And listen, you guys, we appreciate it when you donate to it. This really helps us buy paint and all kinds of stuff. So thank you very much. 
and uh, and all your donations in the past couple of weeks have really helped with John's surgery. That which because John will not qualify for Medicare for a few more years. So he's anytime he gets anything done with the doctor, he has to pay for it. All right. So here's here's the dark purple. Now they look the same, don't they? Kind of darkness. Yeah. The Add darkness, a little white but, to it, though. It's not as rich. Not as bright. No, it's not as purpley. It's not as purpley, but it is purple. It does but it's work. not as purpley. It's, it's, it's grayed. It's grayed. Want, That's all. Not as purpley, but it's more grayed. I want more purpley. So if you want it bright, which, you, you know, this is um, brighter and this is not. Anytime you mix a color, it will never be as bright as it is out of the tube. I think that's one of the questions that came up earlier today, too. That's true. Yeah. So if, you know, anyway, so speaking of, so that's the, I mean, again, it depends on your mixture of blue to red, too. So here's here's this, and that's got more blue in it. And then, see, it just depends on how much red or how much blue you put in it. But it's never going to be as bright as this. Though you can get good enough tones. I mean, it's still fine, isn't it? That's It's still fine. Yeah, but if you really want the purple, purple. Yeah, well, there's that. So, okay. you know, but I mean, it's both, they're both work. And some people might prefer, you know, some people feel like acrylic colors are really bright and kind of in your face, like this shirt I'm wearing, and they might prefer a purple made with the ultramarine blue and, and real red, too. So, you know, you can't, and one's not necessarily wrong. Now, now what we got to do here is, um, speaking of that, let's take a little of this purple color that we just mixed, and let's um, glaze over some of these, push a little of these flowers back a little bit. This is our... This one almost with a little water. We're, we're um, adding a little bit. Not the whole thing. We're just adding a little bit of this. Um, just giving a little shadowy just detail. Just a little shadowy detail here. We'll come back with our final bit of white on some of them. And then some you can even take a little bit of water and brown. And you know, if you want to say a flower is behind something else, right, then you, you just kind of make it darker. Does that make sense? And he had in his picture... A little bit of white and a little bit of um, burnt umber, a little raw umber, kind of darken up a couple like that. So then we're going to leave those just kind of sit there for a minute. Now I want to take, well, as long as we're waiting for that to dry, let's take a little of that phthalo green and white, and let's come up here under the vase. A little bit more white here, and I want it lighter under this part of the vase right here. This was what made this picture so pretty, was to me, was this light this little light color here that went under the leaves like this and was a little bit brighter. It's almost a little bit whiter here like that. See, is that, I mean, that, that's really nice, isn't it? And uh, so a little bit of that right here coming this way. And then you have just kind of a little bit of this kind of scribbled on here like this in a few places. But where you really saw it was right up here. It's a little bit even brighter than there. A little drop of white paint, wipe off the brush, and just kind of work that in. This was your sort of base highlight right here next to that leaf. See, isn't that, isn't that kind of cool how that sort of... Um, now I want to come down here at the same thing on here. Wait a minute, Remember, where are you now? Uh, wait, 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 stop. Are you down at the bottom? Yeah. Hold it. Hold it. Let me back out. There we go. Thank you. Please proceed. Now, I want you to know that I did. I made my vase wider because I don't have a long, skinny canvas. All right? His vase is much more narrow than this, and I made it wider because I didn't want a big bunch of space on here. If I'd had a longer canvas, I would have thinned out the vase. Does that make sense? Sure. But I tried to make the vase sort of fit the, fit the canvas that I had. Okay, so here's a little bit of light down here on the bottom. Okay, and I want to lighten it up, a little bit of white and brown right here behind my vase right here like this. This is our, I want it a little bit lighter here, and that just sort of radiates out. It has a little bit of green to it. There you go. Just, but right next to the vase, I want it lighter right there. Okay, that little bit of a light area, and we're going to lighten it up the front too. It's too, it, it, even though we went back and happily did the bunch of stuff, as opposed to unhappily, um, it still got too um, dark up in the front of the vase here. So we're going to come around here like that, going to lighten this up again. You know, and this is why we talk about layers, because you think you've done just great, 
and then acrylics dry darker and you're going well what happened I I, I know that um, I, I, it, I, it was fine a minute ago <laughs> and it was you're absolutely right it was fine a minute ago see got see how we got light see look at it just makes a difference when you come back with your lights and your darks this is why I tell everybody do your um, uh, you know take that black and white photo see how you did okay and um, she's got it a little bit lighter up in here okay a little bit lighter and uh, there's a little bit of a light highlight right there on this the bottom of his the, the, his little um, pedestal part and I want to come in let's see here 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 and here see right there just brought that right in and kind of cut that out right there that's pretty good right so um, um, let me just tell you a little bit of something about him. I just started to I want to just talk to you a little bit about Whitridge. As an American artist, he was considered. There was something called the Hudson School of Art for American art. You know, for American artists. And I'm just finding his information real quick for you. Um, so his his deal was, and I just I think it's sort of interesting. Was he died in 1910, and um, I'm going to read you a little bit about this when he's drawing. You know, um, he had a lot of you know he had a lot of art friends that were in the Hudson School of Art. Not not surprising, he had art friends. It's all in the 1800s, um, and he was mainly known for his la landscape painting. And he he did these phenomenal birds and stuff, really good birds. And he's um, he served as the president of the National Academy of Design from 1874 to 1875. That was a big deal. And uh, he was a member of selection committee for the Philadelphia, Expo Philadelphia, Philadelphia Centennial Exposition. So I mean, he was a, he was in, he lived till he was ninety. I mean, he was pretty good. You know, he was a really wonderful artist. And again, he traveled to South America and Brazil and and, and and did a lot of interesting birds and so forth. Really like his artwork. I got to tell you, really like his artwork. So you know, I can't I can't say um, enough of uh, nice stuff about him. And I like I think you know we're all I'm all happy for Van Gogh and the rest of those guys. But I think it's nice for Americans to know that we had we had some people. I'm gonna put a little white with the green here, and lighten this up here just a hair. But I want a little bit of brown in it. We'd like to thank Acrylics by Elizabeth for the donation. It came through the PayPal. Oh, Acrylics, thank you very much. This really makes a difference acrylics. for us. So we thank you very much That's for that. Acrylics by Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. We appreciate it. Elizabeth with an S instead of a Z. Okay. And um, again, uh, those of you who can, you know participated in our arch, our uh, Saturday art uh, gallery show on um, Saturday, we like that. Also, I want to thank uh, Eric. He's, he is working on another art challenge with us for our group. 20 by 24 this time. And um, and it was an interesting thing because I'm doing going to do a special video on that because um, making something bigger, you know, the thing of it is, is that when you're painting like this, if you're going to do this painting bigger, then you've got to go find his picture and really look at it because the bigger it is, the more detail. How's that as a rule? So we can get away with a lot because we're not painting this very large. When you start painting this bigger, then you got to pony up to the bar here. And <laughs> well, I don't know where that expression came from, pony up to the bar. But you got to pony up to the bar and get stuff a bit lighter. Does that make sense? So, I mean, a little more detail. Sorry, I'm doing light stuff and thinking of this out loud at the same time. All right, crossing this over like this, adding some more highlights to my flowers. Here we go. A little highlights to the leaves. I think I'm going to have to come in here now and um, we'll do the next layer of, of the flowers, okay? So I'm going to just zoom out here. So now I'm going to, one thing you could do, and, and, you know, and I'm going to tell you, if you have a Posca pen, remember I told you that you need a star pattern for some of these? So I didn't do it on the other one, but I'm going to just show you a little trick, okay? So I know that, for instance, right now, now I need a little star pattern for this flower. So I could, in essence, um, as long as your paint's dry, I could say, you know, I've got one started here like that. So I could start a star pattern. Maybe I want one here, just the outline. I will cover this up with paint so you won't see it. But there's not, they're not all perfect. They're mostly, you, they're just little blobs of color. But occasionally, you're going to see the star pattern. So if you need to outline a couple, 
like that. And then you're going to come back in with your paintbrush and kind of hide the whole outline thing. But if you need to do that so it helps you, um, you know, kind of get the shape, because this is a little counterintuitive to what you normally paint, okay? And again, they're just, there's just a few of these that are like that. You don't need them all. Okay, and then let's see, and then the rest will just, you know. All right, so I've, I've done a couple of these. Let's see, let's do this one. Hey, we'd like to thank Lori for the donation that came in through the PayPal system. And she says, thanks, John, for helping Diane with posting her things on Facebook. Yeah, no, we appreciate you guys very much. Okay, so now we're going to take some white paint, right? And maybe a touch of ultramarine blue, just a drop. And let's just mostly white with just the tiniest bit of ultramarine blue. Let's come back and just kind of repaint this flower a little bit. A couple of these. That's too much blue. Let's try more white. Okay, I'm going to just come in here with the corner of my brush and just play with the, these shapes that I drew in here. All right. Could draw them in with the, you know, white chalk too if you wanted to, if it was everything was dry. Just going to come back in here like this. I don't really want to see my outlines, but I'm just going to kind of, I'm kind of um, saying, all right, I'm saying these are the shapes so that I can do that with it. Um, let's see, what did we do? This one. Like that. So this is a little trick. If you've got some of the shapes, and I'm going to overlap this one with another flower, so that one underneath. There we go. I'm going to overlap those. So you have some that are oh, not the same. Let's see up here. What are we doing up here? Um, yeah, these are kind of more blue over here. Okay. All right. Good. Yes. Now let's take a little bit of white. And in a couple places, we'll add, we'll go over that and add a little bit of white to some of these. Just not the whole flower. We've got a little shadow color going. So add a little, just drop a white here and there. Not the whole when we're thing. talking about the paint challenge, that the painting challenge, that is for the Facebook, private Facebook group. If you're a member of that, Eric and I are working on that and Ginger. We've got three images selected right now. We've got one we're trying to get a hold of the photographer to see if we can use his image. So more details are coming for that challenge. Okay, and I think we want to put a couple little ones up in here with a little more yellow oxide on them. Just a couple kind of, here we go, kind of, these are sort of bud things that haven't haven't happened yet. Does that make sense? Kind of little bud things, and so let's just maybe put a bud thing up there. Little bud, little bud things? Little buddy things. Oh, things. buddy things. Buds, you know, oh, like buds. Paint, paint buds, that kind of thing, right? Like that. They haven't actually... They haven't, they they haven't bloomed yet. Yeah, they haven't opened up yet. Little buds. That, that There you go. All right, so now we're going to take a little yellow oxide, and we're going to make little centers. Look at that. Isn't that cute? Just take it a little corner of the brush and drop a little center in. That, you know, not all of them. Some are facing the other way, and you're not going to have a center. But the ones that are facing us, we're going to have a center. Um, maybe that center is up higher. Maybe they won't all be in the middle, depending on where you're saying the center is of the flower. There, see? Already looking cute, right? I know you all thought this was a really tricky, horribly hard painting, but it's not really. Now I want my stems to come up, so I'm going to just take some purple and um, a dark color and just come up here in between them so that my stems are a little skinnier okay of the flower there like that so you can see my stem a little better and how about here i kind of lost the stem on this one well i didn't mean to i just got carried away with the flower so let's take a little orange color and let's suggest a stem here at least here and um i'm not i'm sorry i lost my stem here well the way it goes. Sorry, there you go. Here's the stem there. Good enough, right? And we've got the light, light yellow here, just on an angle brush. Look what you can do. Because this is dried now. A little bit of yellow, just paint on one side. Look at that. Isn't that nice with a bright color? Okay, so while this is drying, so they actually have, if you look at the real flower, they've actually got. Um, I'm going to take a little blue and purple while we're talking. Um, I'm going to make this a little darker in here, just a few little drops of darker color in the center of these, and a few of these around. 
Um, they've actually got um, like little things coming out of them with little dots. But um, he did, he just what he did is uh, over in this section, and I think I can even do it with a pen. When this dries, I'll show you. He he made a few little dots over there, but I don't know that it added anything. But I think if you're you know it's like um, if if you're really familiar with the flower, it probably did to you. Does that make sense? So here we go. So you can again, if you need to come back with a dark color, and um, Just kind of, you know, add a little bit of dark underneath this leaf here. Should I've got my leaves here on my vase, all right? And um, maybe darken this right here. Not that much. I'm so used to doing this on the computer. I've been having fun. We've been, we, we were, we're doing these video um, computer uh, art, art um, help personal art coaching things and what I do is I, someone sends me their picture and then I go on to the computer screen I start recording the session and talking and I actually take it your, the person's painting into a painting program and show them how to fix it and then compare lights and darks and we we do all that and then send it back mm -hmm. to them and what I noticed is that we've had some tremendous tremendous little bit of light and green improvement John do you have one you could show I think this is one of my I, I said it to you this morning. Yeah, I got I got to put it in there. But we can do this. You know, we have the capability. Uh, well, while John's looking at that, and I'm letting this dry, I don't want to run the hair dryer again. I'm just doing some few lights, um, you know, light colors here and there. I like this, um, just a few, this a few little light colors. Let's um, let's uh, let's see what can we do. I know what we can do. Let's um, I think we need some. Pet. He doesn't have any. Um, when I want, need my little pile of, of of miscellaneous leaves down here like that on the bottom, right? Little petals that fell. Now, I want to just mention something in my chalkboard real quick. This is real important. If you are saying that there is a flower petal that is laying on the bottom of a table. Say, so here's your, where's a chalk, piece of chalk. Okay, so here's your Here's your table, right? And you want to say that there's a flower petal laying here on this table. If you draw it like this, it's going to look like it's falling. You, you have to elongate it to make it look like it's sitting on the table, okay? Because if you just do it like this and you put it here, it looks like it's falling. So if you want something to look like it's flat on the table, you've got to kind of well, do something like that with it, right? Keep it, keep everything kind of elliptical. That's a good word, right? Elliptical. I mentioned this because somebody had sent a painting that we'd done the other day, and um, uh, they had put some flowers down there at the bottom, little petals. I mean, I mean, he didn't do it. I just kind of a thing I like to do. Um, okay, uh, I can show them now, boss. Uh, John's got a picture. I want to talk to you about this personal art coaching, particularly our this is for our academy members. Our, Month, you know, academy members get this that uh, either are monthly or annual subs uh, subscribers, and we're getting ready. I'm, I kid you not, probably by um, end of May. the end of May, um, personal art coaching will totally be on a waiting list. And the, uh, the but the people that are current members now will be guaranteed art coaching. You know, all our current members of academy will be guaranteed, but after that, it'll be a waiting list. Okay, are you ready to? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm just going to add a few more flowers. In I will here. wait. I just it's needed a little that. darker one under here. I felt like I, you know what I mean? There. What's the program Ginger uses for her lessons? Uh, it's painting, Painter 6. It's Corel Painter Essential 6, and we also have the Painter 2018. Okay. All right, go ahead, John. Show the picture. All right, so I'm going to show you number one. Okay, this was the picture that they started with. This is the before. The before, and, they, and this was, uh, I don't know, I guess I should have sent you my, my mm -hmm. painting too, the... Rainbow Barn, I guess we could have shown that. Do we have that on the wall? No, never the mind. The gazebo? No, that's the... That's the not you a, sent me the gazebo. Oh, the gazebo. Okay, here's the gazebo. All right, so here's <laughs> here's number one. It's the gazebo. It's a nice picture, right? Looks very good, but it's, um, you know, but what could you do to make it even better, right? There you go. So I, I did a personal art coaching with her, explained a bunch of stuff about shadows and lights. and. Okay, and number two is up by side by side now. Now, now look at the difference. But the first one was lovely, right? But number two is outstanding. 
And it just, there's a warmth to that, that, it, you know, and, and that person went, you know, I, I can feel that painting. I can feel the emotion of that painting. I just want to go sit in that garden and, and smell those flowers. And I want that gazebo to myself and everybody can just get out, right? <laughs> but a chair there, it's mine, right? And, and that's, that's the feeling that painting evokes in me. And that's what personal art coaching, really, to have a professional artist for under $30 a month, look at your artwork once a week is pretty amazing, don't you think? Yeah, now somebody's asking, um, just to clarify, did you change how many paintings per week a person can send? You can paint, send me one painting a week. We've, we've reduced the one painting a week so we can get the last of the people in. And one also because I, I found that people were not spending enough time on the painting. They were just rushing through to get me three paintings and really not spending enough time. We just, you know, when we first were filling up, we let people do do three, but we kept it, to, you know. Yeah. And, of course, one painting a month can be uh, some other project you're working on that's not mine. Now, speaking of other projects, you cannot send in the art challenges that we do in Facebook for Ginger Cook. Yeah, we felt that that was cheating because a lot of Facebook members <laughs> well, are not, not taking cheating, advantage. but taking advantage of it. But afterwards, after the art challenge is over, if you want to send it to me for some comments or some help, certainly can, we can certainly do that, right? Are you back? But not are we during back? the actual challenge. Um, not, not, one, last time she got inundated with them and, we, and, we, and really backed up the whole system. And not only that, but the people that didn't have personal art challenge, art, art coaching. coaching that had entered the challenge, I felt, felt I, I don't think it was as... Um, Quite as fair. Quite as fair, right? And not that there's really any prize or anything. It's just, you know, we're wanting to see what you guys can do so then we know what we have to do with our lessons. Yeah, too. Let's see where everybody's at, right? That's you know, another that's, thing, That's too. ultimately, we are here to teach you guys how to paint. And, you know, that that's our goal, right? So I'm going to take this one here and just make are a little bit. Are we back? beginners? Well, yeah, we have all kinds of art lessons for beginners. We started off with some of the simplest basic art lessons. You know, some of this stuff that we do on YouTube, probably some of you think is too, uh, you know, much. I mean, look at this one. This was a basic beginner lesson for tulips and how to paint a glass vase. And, you know, to me, it's a very basic, simple one cookie lesson. Very simple. But, you know, it shows a little bit of background and how to do a vase, how to do some lights in it. Everybody seems to like this painting. You know, it's very, very simple. Conversely, you know, as you progress along, you know, here's a painting that we've got with a glass vase. And some lemons and some lilacs, and I love that, don't you? But again, and that's a three is, cookie. And that's a three cookie lesson. So we have one cookie, very simple. How to, if you've never painted before, you can give these lessons as a gift to somebody for a few months. And I'm telling you what. Um, and if you just, uh, you know, if you want a scholarship, somebody say, listen, I want a scholarship. This person, you know, I'll pay for three months, and then they can they can get the personal art coaching, which is really a good thing. And um, and we do that all the time for people. And then you 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 guild up to this level, and you, no one starts. You don't start here, though, you know, and and whatever coaching you've got. Like, for instance, here's a new painting that's coming up. Oh, that, I love that, that one. That, and this, I love this with the birds in the background, but this is not a one-cookie lesson. But the background that you learned here today is not that different. And we've got a beautiful one on clouds on YouTube. It's phenomenal that would teach you how to do these clouds. So it's this is not, even though this is really beautiful, I love the heart shape of the birds and the branches. And even the clouds have a heart shape. Um, I think that really says kind of lovebirds, right? They're not really lovebirds, but I mean, it kind of feels Why like that. Why can't they be lovebirds? Well, lovebirds are actually a bird, John. They're, they're, oh. It's an actual bird called right. lovebird. There's an actual bird that's called lovebird? Yes, there oh, is. Oh, that's so silly. Yeah, there is. And they're really pretty, wrong. too. So anyway, there's that, right? But, you know, convert, you know, so there's all kinds of things that you can do. So look, look at that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of orange color. Are you with me? And um, just in a couple of these, I'm going to just tap. That's too much. Too, too, don't, too bright. I want it just slightly more orange than that. Just a little bit. In a couple of these, I want to... There you go. Ooh, I like just, that. Just, Brighten it up a bit. Just a bit in the centers, right? Yeah. Not every center, but just a couple, right? And then he, he did these little dots. I'm going to just show you. He did, because he didn't... He did these little dots... Little dots of white in here somewhere. And I'm not sure what that was about. Maybe that was his canvas showing through, but there were these little dots. <laughs> so, I just, so you're putting the canvas back on? I, I, I don't know what it was, John. I really don't know. But I, I'm, 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 I'm nothing if not faithful, right? Okay. That's a few little dots there. I bet he had those, I so we're, we're putting that there. And then the other thing I want to do here before I forget. Um, I wish you've already forgot. 
I did. I was going to do something, and I totally <laughs> forgot. Right? And it's just so annoying when that happens. Oh, Does that annoy annoy you? Somehow I knew that would happen. Oh yeah, I remember. Now it's coming back to me. It's coming back to me. I, I know it. What did I do with this? Okay, so all right, we had some other. That's brush. a great looking painting. It's pretty, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I think this is pretty. And again, if you wanted to add, I'm looking at this going. If you wanted, to, I'm looking at this. Do we need a few more flowers here? Maybe we need a couple more over here. Did you you need some here? You could put another little group of flowers right here. If you feel like somehow you, you, you what I love about painting is that if as opposed to buying flowers, is you can always add a couple more. <laughs> if you feel like you need another flower somewhere, right? You can always add a couple more. And I like all these over here. So that's our that's our painting. And then what he did, which we're going to do since I find the brush. Hmm, well, I can use this brush. I want to do a little bit lighter back here by the, here's a little bit of yellow and cad red medium, right? A little bit more, maybe a little yellow oxide with that. Wipe the brush off and then right next to here, see this? Right next to here, because this is just hardly any paint at all, but it's very bright next to here. I want to lighten it up here and over here, just that a little bit good. more of the orange. And it just, I'm doing, I'm exaggerating a little more than he did, but this is just, you know, you got to get down to your own personal preferences at some point. And I so love this color next to the phthalo green. And I so love it when you've got it up here. And I like it a little bit more just down here like this, just on the base. Hey, I'd like to thank Michelle, Jeanette, and Arthur for the donations that came in through the PayPal system. Oh, thank you very much. And when, when we say that through the PayPal system, you can, you know, it's easy enough to, um, you know, YouTube has a thing where you can, if you're doing a live show, you can donate only during the live shows through YouTube, but they take like 30, what, how much did they take? 30%? 30%. But if you go to our website, there's a donation page. And even if you're watching this after the show's over and you feel like making a small donation, it's as little as a buck. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can do the donation page through the PayPal system. Okay. So on our, on our um, website, website. Gingercooklive. You have to gallery. have a PayPal account to make that work. Tom? No, you do not. Okay. See, I think that a lot of people might think you would, but you don't. No. Nope. All, all, right. all major credit cards accepted. Credit so, all right. So there's there's my picture. Um, here's the set. That's my picture. Here's the other one I did. I think I'm pretty close. Don't you think so? I think you're darn close. Um, I might have you know pinched the 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 bottle you know the neck in here a little, but again, it's a little different base. Um, but that's basically um. Let's see, I want to put that in water. Um, I, I think I would like this dark line. He had this dark line here. And again, I have to turn my base upside down to really get it. Because to make this curved, see if I can turn the brush this way. This is really a bigger brush than I wanted. Wow, is that... Okay, so that brush is way too big. This is like Goldilocks, isn't it? I don't know where all my angle brushes went, but here's one. All right, uh -huh. so want to know how to erase... You made a boo boo. Well, it's too it's too too fat a line. My it gosh, is. it's very horrible. Fat a line. Very, so I could because it's dry, I can I can erase it and just paint paint that little color over it and kind of bring that shadow up. See how I did there, and then bring this shadow up here. I wanted it a little bit darker there, and I'm still going to put some of the light color back. See, you can. There we go. And I want a little bit of lighter color right down in here, like this on the base. And um, just a little bit of a light color here on the shadow, like that. Coming Which back we all agree is a little strange shadow, but deal with it. I, I'm sorry, it was in his picture. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm agreeing with you guys, and I don't know, because it's a very odd, but that's what he did, right? I'm going to lighten this up again right here and under this uh, leaf right there. There's a little bit of light. Put a little tiny bit of light here. He's got a little bit coming around here like that. And then he had a little bit more light right here on the bottom of the vase. Kind of came around like this. All right, I think we're done with this. I think we're going to call it done. And um, what was I going to show you? Um, oh, yeah, here. So we'll sign it real quick. And then we'll be done. Everybody will know. You know what, that you're done? Or we have another 20 minutes to go? Well, no, we're done. Dunnish. 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 Dunnish to find done. Well, if I see something else, I mean, you guys, if I see something else, like for instance, if see, I saw, I knew it. saw something <laughs> else, like for instance, right here, like for instance, if I wanted I was worried to, about that one. I know. So I wanted it to It was break, sinking back there. 
Yeah, if I wanted to brighten up this leaf back here yeah, a little bit, yeah. right in here like that, I could do it. Right? You could. And, and you I, did. And yeah, that one there. Yeah, so I mean, and I almost feel like he's got one coming down here. I almost feel like I need a leaf coming down like this. And I did, see? So even though he didn't do it, I'm bringing one down, right? I mean, for me, because my, my design's a little bit balanced, different than his, so I'm bringing one down there, too. So I, to me, that works, right? And I want to make sure you can see this one coming up this way. There. All right. Works Ooh, for me. we got to fix my... We'll keep going. I have to fix my link. Now that you mentioned that. Okay. He's fixing the link. link. And while you're doing that, I want to show you... For those of you who have not seen our awesome newsletter, we have all kinds of new paintings coming up for our members to paint and things that we've done before. This was not in the newsletter, but this is one that's coming up. I love this. This is a Gauguin, another one of the old dead guys. In fact, I'm going to start putting that as a, um, a tag on our picture, old, old dead guys from now on on YouTube. If it's an old dead guy, I'm going to make that a tag. So if you're just looking for old um, dead guys, you could maybe, that'll come up and it'll, it'll okay. It'll, it'll seem like an odd tag, but it'll come up. So this is this Who is did a, that one? this was um, Degas. Remember, he's the oh, one yeah. that uh, not Degas um, Gauguin. He's the one that went bamboo off to the Tahitian island and painted all the all the natives, right, gals with the anyway <laughs> beautiful colored uh, sarongs and other stuff. So that was him. Yep. And but this is where he left town. Okay, so this was pretty good, right? I love this little farmhouse. That's this, that's this week's lesson. Okay, that's yeah. And then this week, um, and we've got again, we have an auction, and though we have a, we have over seventy items in the auction, and most of them have bids, but they start as low as some um, forty-five bucks. Forty-five bucks. And here's, for instance, one. This little. Um, uh, let me just move this out of the way. This is a little bridge, a snow-covered bridge, six by eight, and uh, it's. I love that one. It was never a lesson. It was going to be a lesson. I never turned it into a lesson. It was off some, you know, old dead guy. And you I don't guys, know why you never did that one as a lesson. And then I don't, we were going, I think we did, but so long ago that the file was corrupt. So I think something we, happened to it. Something happened to it. So, we, you know, so anyway, there's this bridge, which is six by eight. Um, I love this one with the kids going home in the snow. This is one we did for YouTube, but there's the original for that, eight by ten. And of course, this is one of my favorites with the with the Mardi Gras mask and all these colors and stuff. I think this is really pretty. That was this year's mask. That was this year's mask. This was one. That was last the, year's the, mask. Last year's mask. And I like all the gold work and stuff around the face. And then we had, so if you're into collecting masks, I think this is really pretty. And I really love this one with the gold and the, uh, the red feathers and the turquoise. So those are few. And do you guys remember this? Now, this is fun, memory lane. Again, these were a few auction pieces. have not yet received any bids. It might be fun. Do you guys, this one, I love this one. The background was red. This is actually a video on YouTube on trees. I love this one. Very abstract. It doesn't show up so well in the picture on the auction. This is one that's available. You guys may not have seen. And I'll tell you what, if you want to know how to make clouds, these are the ones to own. Look at this. Can you see it with the glare? Can you, yeah. see, can you see it? Yeah. And uh, remember, I talked about these birds that were coming up that was going to be a lesson. Do you see similarities in how these clouds are done? Look here. Do you see that? These are YouTube lessons. If you haven't done this lesson on YouTube, you really ought to. This is like a masterful lesson. But these two original uh, paintings of the clouds, I think they'd make a nice set. And if you just, even if you just had them hanging in your studio as references on clouds, these would be two good ones to own. And um, anyway, no, those have not seen any bids yet. So the auctions close May 1st. No. Nope. May 5 and 6. May 5 and 6. They have different ending dates. They have different May ending days. May 5 and 6. They have different ending days and times so that you don't um, you know, get beat out of a picture that you really want. Now, we know that you guys saw the horse earlier as a lesson. That will be after this week's lesson. will be next week's lesson for the horsey. Horsey, yeah. So, so the, we got the barn and then we got the horse, all right? And so then if you, <laughs> you also... have the horse and if you, the barn. Okay, so then let's say I need another blank paint, you know, another canvas... So here's the thing, too. If, you know, suppose you just wanted to paint the horse. Well, you didn't want any of so You could have a rip about the barn, and I could keep the birds and, the, you know, and the, and the branch that they sat on, whatever, right? Just want to do the horse. You know, you can sign up for our academy for, um, for just seven days for nine ninety five, and just do whatever. You, can, you have over 300 lessons. You can do them all, whatever, like a marathon week for you, or just pick the one you want to do. It doesn't come with personal art coaching, but these videos are very, very well done. They're step-by-step. Step. 
John isn't talking in any of them. It's just me talking to you. They're really good. Well, thanks. Videos. Put well, me under the bus. No, I'm just saying that, you know, that's how they're I done, know. right? That's Some people consider me snarky. And then we have, uh, yes, it's my day, isn't it? <laughs> um, and then also we have downloadable videos that uh, it's called, uh, we have a store and you can just buy a video and own it forever or rent it. But you God, Did you know that you can rent them? Some of them. Some of them are not all, of them, but some no. you can just rent. So, you know, for a day, it's just quick and paint it. So, you know, check out our store too, which is good. All right. So, and Silver, Mem Silver Members, uh, we just put up a brand new video of, of that of the Fantasy Horse. That's the newest download available running, on our store. Running Wild. Running Wild. Okay. So, I like this background right here. You knew which I would, one are right? you going with? That this one? This one. Yeah. All right. So, we're going to be giving away this picture today. Okay. Yes and yes. Yes and yes. All right. I, I, I have the I, link up there for you people that are live and in person right now. You can participate in this giveaway. The secret word is watermelon. Why is that a secret word? Why did you come up with watermelon? Uh, the bear did. Talk to him. Watermelon. Do, do we, are, He's thinking spring, I guess. I have no idea. I, I'm just, he wants watermelon today. Really? I, That's I'm what he just said. So, so curious about how you came up with a watermelon. Watermelon. Um, type thing. So we're going to start this now. This is fun. Uh, incidentally, if you're wondering where to get these brushes, these angle brushes, these uh, the ones that I use the 99% of the time are these ruby satin single, uh, um, ruby satin silver, uh, a, a quarter inch, half inch, and uh, three eighths inch angle brushes. And I want to just give a shout out to my friends, the brush guys, for um, uh, the fact that they give our uh, viewers a 5% discount if you use my name. You go to www.thebrushguys.com and anything they sell, it doesn't matter if the Art Sherpa's brushes, maybe you have some other brand of brush you like, they carry, you you, you still can just, it uh, doesn't have to just be, um, uh, you know, brush brushes that are on my teacher page. I have a teacher page, but it doesn't have to be those. It'd be anything that you find up there that you want to buy and um, that, you know, you get... Um, you can get 5% discount, but you have to use ginger cook all one word. All right. So that would be the, um, that's the only, only hitch. That's, hitch, the, ca that's the caveat in the, um, um, in the ointment there. Right. So you got to use that. You've got to do that. All right. So what? What? that's the caveat in the ointment. Caveat in the ointment. <laughs> caveat in the ointment. Gotta I don't know what it. that means, but it sounded good at that's the time I said good. it. Right. Did, did it sound good at the time I said it? Yes and yes? Yes and yes. Okay. I, I thought it did. I mean, you know, you can't have everything. I mean, it sounded good. Okay. We've got... I thought we had a question go by. We're on somewhere. Oh. Uh, beautiful. What brush you use for those clouds? Is it like a stiff bristle round brush? Yeah, I bought these. At, you know, I'd give you this whole thing for the brush guys, and then I'd turn around and tell you, I got those at Jerry's. But any round, stiff brush will do. Um, there's, you just don't want a soft one. For instance, like um, this is a this is a round imperial bristle, and it's fairly stiff. And you can use different sizes of round ones. Do they call it, do they classify that as the hog hair ones? Yeah, yeah, right. they're very stiff. Here's the thing. The reason you can use a, a bright brush, but you'll just ruin it. So if you've got an old bright brush, you can they're fine. They work just fine. It's just these were designed to do it and not screw the brush up. OK, but, uh, you know, I didn't find a round brush till about, I don't know, about eight years ago. I was happily ruining brushes left and right, making clouds. So <laughs> it's not like you have to have a round brush. It just just, um, you know, it's just nicer. Right. For your. Um, I'm gonna make just a little version of this because I think it was kind of kind of like the, the 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 what we were doing today, didn't you guys? Kind of like what we were doing. I thought it might be nice to have a small version of what we just painted. What do you think? I think it's a great idea. Got a ruler handy? I do. Thank you. So. Um, important stuff here. Oh, well, you're measuring what kind of bear you've got. Oh, I think I I just wanted to say help. Um, I think Helen showed us a bear on, on the Facebook club. Uh, Helen's. Oh, she has a baby us, Sammy. She got a baby Sammy, and she got it from one of the members. 
I think she's one of the members of the group. She's made, she's made, you know, you make friends in a Facebook club, which is really nice. And you make friends with people online. One of the nice things about taking the time to, to join the group and chat with people is it's amazing. You, you can get an art buddy to paint with. I mean, all kinds of great stuff can happen with uh, your art friends, you know. Uh, see, an angle brush is designed for leaves like this. You can't. You know, they're absolutely designed to just, um, um, you know, you can paint paint anything with these. They're just great. You just do these brush strokes and, okay, we just, I love this orange background, by the way. I don't know if anybody else likes it. I just think it's really pretty. Somebody asked earlier when they go to the Facebook page, it now says page is not available. That is correct. It is a closed group now, and the only way to get into it is to be a member of the Academy, gingercooklive.gallery. We did that. We closed the group, you guys. We closed the group because it, when, when groups get, there's a lot of art clubs on, on Facebook. There's acrylic art clubs, and they're fine. But the thing of it is, is that people get lost in them. And we wanted to make a group where our people felt... Um, they could be seen and they, heard. They could be seen and heard and ask questions and somebody. And I take the time to comment on people's paintings. I don't always, like for those of you who entered on the art show Saturday, didn't answer all, didn't, sometimes even with 4,000 people and that many people entering, I know, I think Judy said we had like 700, didn't we, Judy, that had that, that many coming in? 700 yeah, entries or something that came in. That's a lot of paintings. And our moderators, did, and Judy, you know, they worked their tush off to get these paintings up. For you guys to see so if you're you're a member it's nice to comment on other people for art show it's really a nice thing to comment on other people's art it's a nice thing because i mean there's so much work that goes into putting up the pictures and if you're participating in any painting that you want to post and a lot of people if you don't know how to do it that's fine but you know we'll, we're going to do some videos again on how to show people how to do stuff but um a nice thing to do is um is to add, you know, mention the size, how big you made made, made something, and uh, what you painted it on, what kind of paints you used, because other people in the group are really interested in what you did. One lady did this adorable um, pe uh, peacock. No, it was ostrich. 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 That thing was a, that's and I great. think she probably, probably had like 200 comments on it. I love that thing. Um, and it was just made me laugh every time I saw it. I mean, your creativity is is knows no bounds. No, oh, I like that one. And it's fun to find a place where you're appreciated. And we you know? appreciate you. And we appreciate you. And we appreciate our moderators. And you know, we made that decision. A lot of people didn't agree with us when we did it. Um, but so, guess what? We did it anyway. And it probably cost us in the long run. Probably cost me personally. Probably cost us, you know, YouTube viewers uh, to do it because, um, you know, it, as far as you know, people finding us. Sometimes people will find you through Facebook and then come to YouTube and see you, right? And so, you know, we by limiting that, then we sort of closed an avenue of um, advertising. Avenue. Advertising. However, I do have another Facebook page. It's just called Ginger Cook Seventy Two, and if it's one of my paintings, you want to show it to me, you can post it on that page. If you can, if I friend you, you know, you can ask to be friended, and I, I'm happy to do that. So, I mean, we haven't closed off all avenues. I'm always interested in what you guys are painting and, and how you're dealing with the lessons. And, of course, you, you can always write our academy, contact us. If you have a question, you don't have to be a member of the academy to get a question asked. Um, you know, when you've been painting for as many years as I have, I forget questions that people have. You know what I mean? It's something that makes so obvious to me isn't obvious to you, so I won't think to address it because it doesn't occur to me anybody wants to know. How's that? Does that make sense? Hey, this is kind of cute, isn't it? Don't you like the orange background? I'm just saying. <laughs> just kind of nice, right? So, um... I'd like to thank Lee for the donation, and I've got to go check to see if somebody else has came through, because I didn't email notice on it. Thank you very we much. we got 207 people entered so far. Really? That's all that That's wants it. to enter in this? Really? How many people are currently watching? Only 207 want it. Huh. No matter where you are in the world. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not near a mic. In case they can't hear me. Really? I know. People say they can't hear me. 
Well, John says no matter where you are in the world that, um, you know, consider yeah. uh, consider uh, entering this, right? Consider entering because we'll mail it to you. We've, we've had a couple Canadians win. We've sent them off to them. And... Um, uh, Oh, I think this is nice. I'm liking this. What about you guys? I think that's kind of pretty. So, um, anyway, we appreciate everybody hanging with us this afternoon. We do these Sunday afternoon ones for um, uh, our European group. For our European group who, who finds staying up. We expect all the foreigners to enter this contest. We do this for you guys. Well, yeah, come on, you guys. We'll mail it to you. I don't care if you live in Germany or Bangladesh. We'll mail it to you. Okay? So, uh... Even Katmandu. Katmandu. Oh, yeah. It's Katmandu. Katmandu. Uh... All right. I mean, with that background that you did, John, I think this 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 um, flower painting can, can, you know is perfect, don't you? I think it's marvelous. All right, we're going to call that done. What do you think, you guys? You like okay, it? Okay, last call for entries, last calls. He didn't really mess up my background this time. No, I mean, I thought the background was just uh, perfect for this, you know, myself. One of those times I get lucky. There. I did like that purple one, though, you used the other day. Yeah, I'm just going to, I want to just share, you know, you just, your background can make all the difference in the world. I mean, this is very cheerful and happy. Um, you see, this is, you know, they're both... Happy, cheerful, but <laughs> you can see the difference. And just Some are the color. Happier. This looks tropical, doesn't it? Because we did an orange background, and this looks more New England. There you go. You know, so just just saying, depending on the colors you pick, depends a lot on on what you got going. You know, I mean, I personally prefer this as far as the background. I really like that better. Really? Yeah. I don't know. They they're both have their they both have their spot. Well, they do. They both have their spots. I guess just, it really depends on the decor. Yeah, of yeah, the room. yeah. You know, if you lived in Florida, you might like this one better. You know, to me, or what depends on what you're selling on your house, like that. You know, I mean, you know, what your decor is. Well, not everybody has orange. You know, that's that one thing my agent told me years ago. She says I can't sell orange. <laughs> she says no orange paintings. I can't sell orange. Well, pooey. You know, well, well how unfun is that? Can't sell orange. What a deal. Good there, fine. let's just put a few little dark spots in here like that. Okay, you guys, this is it. Let's do the drawing. Wait a minute. Somebody made a try, Julie. What? Somebody didn't like something? Somebody doesn't no. like something? Everybody's okay? Somebody having trouble entering and would have entered if they could have entered? Is this what you're telling me? Okay. Somebody said they might have entered, but they but they didn't enter, right? John's busy typing. I hear the little typing away over there. Okay. So I'm going to just stop and sign it, you guys. Okay. Entries are now being closed. All right. I'm making sure I don't have anything else in here. John, what colors did you use in the background? Leftovers. So it would have to be, looking at that, it's going to be the CAD. CAD red medium, probably some yellow. Yeah, it was definitely the yellow, the CAD red medium. Did you put anything on the edges there? No, I did mine? nothing. Nothing. I mean, I could put something on the edges. Well, no, you, you don't want need me to... to. No. But... I mean, did you want me to put something no, right there? No, so it's okay, right? No, I'm liking it. All right, just right in here, right this edge right here. It's leftover paints. I get the leftovers. That's, that's the extent of my painting. Say, and he does he does these little sheet canvas sheets like this and sometimes some of them are plain and some of them have different colors and this was pretty I thought yeah I'm trying to branch out but it depends if she leaves me more than one color you know but I mean like today look how much color paint we have left over here so I'll probably now we're gonna be live tomorrow night at six uh, at, at 7 30 and we're gonna do something else and I can't remember what we were gonna do and I haven't done it yet anyway so we'll post it tomorrow morning <laughs> how's that do you like all that 
you like blah, them blah, to blah, blah, blah. Right? So there you go, you guys. All right. And uh, this was our... Door. We're going to close the door. This is, uh, let's do a drawing for this fabulously lovely, cute piece of art here. Love it, don't you? It's a Ginger John painting. It's a Ginger John... Yeah, there you go. Ginger John painting. There you go. Do, 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 do. 255. All right, that's nice. That's a good entry. I think that's, that's a good number for a Sunday. That's a good number for a Sunday. You know, not that we're, you know, we're glad you um, you decided to enter. Absolutely. Alexa, pick a number between 1 and 255. Your random number between 1 and 255 is 164. 164. You went to the other end this time. 164. Wow, who's that? That's interesting. Okay. That's interesting. Well, didn't you think that's interesting? Did she pick 164? Yeah, I think that's you know, interesting. I don't know how she does that. Me neither. I want to just brighten this up down here a little bit. Just somebody always asks me how this works, right? Look at here. A little bit of light next to the... Look here. Just I know I said I was done, but look what that does. Kind of balances it out, too. See? There we yeah. go. Missy. 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 Missy Tammy. Missy then, Tammy is the wiener. Oh, is she? She is. She writes us a lot. Is that the, she, you know, I see some lovely Missy comments. Missy Tammy that, Niffin? Yeah, Niffin, yeah. She's also also one of our members. Oh, he's Niffin versus Niffin? N Niffin, yeah. Yeah, I always get nice comments yeah. from her. How do you know? Well, I know who she is. Well, there you go. Congratulations, Miss Tammy. And then send us your um, mailing address, please. Contact us at gingercooklive.gallery. There you go, you guys. So, yeah, it's a little bit of light back down here like that. And actually, I'm kind of loving that little little vase, right? Bam, bam. Yeah, kind of liking that little vase. I see one little, little light I have to put on right here. There we go. All right, tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. And be surprised. We'll do something nice. Yes. And, um, yeah, be know, surprised. We don't yeah. know what it is yet. Well, I kind of do, but I've forgotten. <laughs> I have to do it. I'm just going to do it right after the show here. I'm going to paint something, and then we'll post it up. Uh, I'll have it on. Um, we'll post it up a picture of it on the YouTube channel. You know, you know, John will yeah, get it thumbnail. posted in a thumbnail, and I'll put it in our Facebook group, and I'll also put it on my page, Ginger Cook uh, 92. Is that it? I said 72. I 72. I forget. Anyway, I it was 92. It might be 92. Anyway, I will put it up there too. <laughs> it's somewhere. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for playing. Thanks for hanging in there with us. If you have any questions you, that we didn't get answered today and you want them answered tomorrow, write us and let us know. And we appreciate it. And congratulations, Tammy, on um, winning the picture. Oh, and I think it's Missy first. Missy Tammy. Missy Tammy Niffin, right? Niffin or Niffin? Niffin? Kniffin. Ooh, with a K. Kniffin. I like the Kniffin. All right. That Bye. does it for us. We're out of here. Time to go to the grocery store. So we have dinner tonight. See you later. Bye, all. Bye. I'm a student, I say with glee, of ginger cook. I'm a, I'm a student, I say with glee, of ginger cook's academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.